ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NVIDIA co-founder, president, and CEO, Jensen Wong. Good morning. Welcome to GTC 2012. This is a conference dedicated to the advancement of GPU technology. And this is a conference dedicated to the science that you do on GPUs. You are the stars. This is a celebration of your science, of your work, and your innovations. Today, I want to do three things. I want to give you an update on the progress that we've made with GPU computing and CUDA over the last several years since the last time we've met. The second thing I want to do is to reveal for the first time some technologies that we've been working on back at the labs. And the third thing I want to do is to introduce you to some partners, some companies we've been working with that you wouldn't have re regularly seen us with. We got a big day for you, a great show, so let's get started. <clears throat> CUDA has made enormous progress over the last couple of years. In fact, if you looked at when we first started, 2008 was about two years into the introduction of CUDA. We had about 150,000 downloads already. We had one whopping supercomputer. 60 universities were already starting to teach CUDA in their coursework. And there were about 4,000 papers if you searched it on Google Scholar. Just a few years later, just a few years later, there's a million and a half downloads of CUDA. We believe a one download of CUDA per second, about 150,000 active developers of CUDA around the world, from one supercomputer to now 35. The top supercomputers in China, Japan, Russia, and this year, hopefully the top supercomputer in the world, the top supercomputer here in America. From 60 universities, we're now all the way up to over 500. 48 countries, every continent, in Chinese and Japanese and Russian. The CUDA coursework has been translated to universities and students all over the world. 4,000 papers now has nearly five-folded to 22,500. The number of papers is really a reflection of the innovation that people are doing around CUDA. The, re the paper is a reflection of the type of innovation and the power of GPU computing, how it's able to advance your research. One way to look at that <clears throat> is to compare it to other technologies that are very important in the industry. Hadoop, a distributed file system, a powerful, high-performance, parallel data processing algorithm called Map MapReduce, OpenMP and API, directives, extensions to Fortran, C, C++, making that, that language capable of understanding shared memory, highly parallel systems. Both of those standards are very important to the industry, and notice how they've grown over the years. Here's CUDA. It really reflects the power that GPU accelerate computing has on your work. It also reflects the accessibility of CUDA. One of the best things that we've ever done was made sure that CUDA was available not only on Tesla, but available on every single GPU that we created. As a result of that, 100% of every computer company in the world offer CUDA today. It's available in every single country on the planet. It's available in workstations, desktop computers, and laptops. I don't actually know of one country or one computer company where you couldn't buy a computer that has CUDA inside. You can literally access CUDA wherever you are, whoever you are. We've democratized high-performance high computing as we know it. Now, the response from all of you have been fantastic. Out of 150,000, 3,000 in room today. The, the feedback from all of you and the encouragement has been completely fantastic. I'm going to embarrass a few people today and read, out the, read their quotes and read the feedback they've given us out loud. 
Lane Cousin, GPU computing has utterly transformed the science we can do. Gary Junkin from the University Auto Automata Barcelona, when I first programmed in CUDA, I was so excited to see the progress of the algorithm literally within seconds, I was unable to sleep. Well, the reason for that was he was expecting to be up all night anyways. <laughs> Stanley Siebert, I want to say thanks to the engineers at NVIDIA. CUDA has saved my thesis. I want to thank the engineers at NVIDIA as well. The work that they have done as a result of CUDA has been really, really fabulous. And it's very rewarding to all of us in the final analysis, the ability to make an impact in your work is what drives us. The adoption of CUDA is also industry-wide. In 2007, we went to supercomputing for the very first time. That little green dot, well, this is, uh, this is the show floor, the exhibit floor of supercomputing 2007. It was hosted in Reno, and uh, that little green dot is the NVIDIA booth. And that little green dot is the only place that you could find CUDA. And that was the only place you could find a GPU. Well, the reports that I received from the team that went to supercomputing was glowing. They thought we were everywhere. They told me the adoption of CUDA was complete. If not, if I hadn't seen this, if not because I didn't see this image, I wouldn't have probably enthusiastically continued to invest in CUDA. Thank goodness their reports were glowing. We doubled down, and only a few years later, this is what supercomputing looked like. Every single computer company, just about every software company, tool company, High-performance computing specialists, VARs, included Tesla or did work around CUDA that year. It is very, very clear that the democratization of high-performance computing is happening right in front of us. Now, it's very clear the result of the pervasiveness of CUDA and the power that it's able to provide to your work. But ultimately, it's about the science. It's beyond papers, it's beyond OEMs, it's beyond industry. It's really about your work, and that's what GTC is about. It's about your work. And these are some of the things that we're gonna be talking about during this conference. It's really amazing. Adaptive radiotherapy, the ability for CT scans to be interpreted right away so that they could recompute how radiation therapy ought to be directed into the living body. Dendrite simulations. Understanding the fact that when metal cools, the rate at which it cools and the manner at which it cools has a lot to do with its rigidity and its robustness. Understanding the collect behavior of swarming living things. Combustion efficiency. Turbulent flow simulations. Understanding how to, simu how to design engines that are more efficient. One of my favorites, air traffic modeling. There are planes flying all over the country. If there was a disaster of some kind, a weather change in some way, the ability to redirect all of those planes instantaneously would be wonderful to route them to a better path. Today, we utilize literally the heroics of a lot of people in towers to try to figure out exactly what to do in the event of a disaster. Seismic topography, understanding the nature of Earth and understanding how earthquakes could affect ourselves. There's so much going on here. There are so much going on here. From image processing to machine vision, medical imaging, molecular dynamics, the list just goes on and on. Even computer graphics, even computer graphics. Well, that is all just what we've achieved. That's our achievement so far. And that's nothing compared to the work that we're gonna do going forward. We've decided to double down yet again. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about some of our most important inventions, some of our greatest efforts, and in my opinion, some of our finest work. 